Human Concern basically uh, provides a solution for uh, situational intelligence um, rapidly after a natural disaster for emergency operation centers. So within 15 minutes after an earthquake, you would basically see a heat map of damage at a city block level. Uh, uh, so, so this is, let's say, for San Francisco. It will be um, 80 to 85 percent accurate within the first 15 minutes, and you will quickly get a snapshot of which blocks are in what level of damage. Damage is uh, measured in block damage index and represented by four colors. And you could have as low as hairline cracks to as high as collapses. And you could see that very clearly in, uh, in, in four colors. Uh, darker shades of red mean more than 50% of the block is in that damaged state. And lighter shades mean at least 10% of the block is in collapse or in that damaged state. Now, uh, this is uh, just the, the, now this initial prediction is made using uh, tons of data sources right from uh, your building details, your retrofit history, your soil patterns, uh, as well as the live shaking which happened for your uh, building. Now, uh, this is just the damage um, prediction, but emergency responders also uh, require um, uh, more information when they have to actually make response priority decisions. So uh, we can we overlay uh, several other data sources over it. So you can go to filters and you can basically say, OK, show me those areas which have a, a significant senior population. So you can basically uh, filter it. And um, then you can specifically see a, a, a portion of these areas. and. And, and you can basically uh, then pr assign response priorities. You can also do your custom data overlays. So you can give a specific databases, just like disabled data, disabled, disabled population data, uh, low income data, or any other data, and we would overlay it. And then you can make decisions based on, OK, uh, I want to send rescue to low income disabled populations first, or, or senior populations first, because in the past disasters, we have seen that uh, uh, low-income uh, senior populations uh, were the worst affected. Uh, in Hurricane Katrina and Sandy, 75% of the deaths which occurred after the hurricane were actually uh, hypothermia uh, deaths because they died of uh, waiting for relief outside in the cold for several nights. So response priority is really a key. Um, I think Mike can uh, yeah. now introduce and how, th how this platform helps him. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I was immensely impressed with the technology because it's really going to be used for a training, exercise, response, and recovery tool because uh, they've been able to run so many simulations on the various faults in the San Francisco Bay Area. It really pin pinpoints areas of the city that we should really take mitigation efforts to, you know, make sure that those areas are, are shored up and that we're mindful of. And then it, it is also helpful in the immediate aftermath where usually there's so much chaos after a major catastrophe and you don't have any situational awareness at all. We, we will immediately have urban search and rescue teams after a, after a catastrophic earthquake coming in from across California and the United States. We'll have strike teams coming in to, to fight the fires that are gonna be inevitable, probably about 200 to 300 fires. So the quicker that we can get, you know, a handle on, okay, what areas of the city are most damaged? What, what are areas of the city should urban search and rescue be deployed to? What areas of the city are most likely going to, you know, be on fire? What areas of the city, you know, the, are the priority routes open for us to start clearing those priority routes? So it's really a, a very helpful tool for emergency response and emergency preparedness because it's right now our exercises really lack the ability to simulate, okay, if there is a 7.9 on the San Andreas or if there's a 7.0 on the Hayward Fault, what does that mean for each area of the city? And they've got the technology down to, you know, a building level that they will be able to predict it. So that it's an amazing tool for us and we'll 
make us much better emergency responders. So. so for in fact, we have a module called critical infrastructure module. So if the uh, city shares their critical information data, uh, let's say schools, hospitals, or uh, transportation networks, uh, or, or all the lifeline networks basically, we give them specific damage details and uh, vulnerabilities of those, of those uh, uh, specific infrastructure. Um, so uh, here I'm actually uh, showing you the, the damage for a simulation which we ran for the San Andreas Fault uh, 7.4 magnitude. And you can see and prepare for uh, basically any uh, magnitudes on any of the nearby faults which you selected and which are, which are possible. Um, and I don't know if you, do you want to run through the all the eighty different scenarios oh, that yeah. you had because um, this is what really impressed me. I mean, surely. it's uh, um, you know, uh, just a second. It's almost a, a scrolling map of different magnitude earthquake and how it would impact the city. So, yeah. So we recently actually um, ran a whole suite of around eighty different simulations, and um, this was uh, the the damage map. Uh, so this, we are, we are starting right from a 5.1 on the San Andreas Fault, uh, which has a, a very low return period, uh, less than 20 years. And, and then we are talking about going and, and, and going, uh, increasing this to um, around, going up till seven, uh, around 7.9. And so it, as you see, the red areas increase, the green is trying to vanish, and the yellows vanish. So uh, this is basically a 7.9 magnitude. Uh, on the San Andreas Fault. So in all, in, in this whole suite of um, uh, ground motions or earthquakes, um, the, the epicenter was kept constant, but uh, we randomized the, 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 the fault uh, characteristics, the rupture, the dip angle, and other, other features. Um, this, was, uh, this, this came out of a, a research project, uh, 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 which was uh, an inter interdisciplinary project at uh, Stanford University. Uh, and me and my founders were basically uh, involved in that project and which we took forward as a company.